Well, good morning and welcome to First Baptist. We're so glad you decided to join with us and worship this morning. We'll stand as we sing on this beautiful day, Glorify Thy Name. with me in prayer. What a sacred privilege, O oh God, is ours to gather in this place with people of faith to worship you and to adore your name. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here, to be a part of each other in the house of worship, to pray and to seek your face knowing that your spirit is already here doing his work to exalt the name of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. What a privilege indeed to be able to come to the house of God to worship. For so many weeks we were not able to do that. You quickly realize how vitally important it is to be able to come to, to the house of worship to pray and to be a part of the people of faith. So thank you for being here. We had a wonderful congregation in the early service with guests. and We have many guests in this service and we thank you for being a part of our time of worship together today. It's a privilege to be together again in the house of God, to worship and to praise His name. It's so good to be able to start back some regular activities. This past week, we were able to have a prayer meeting, men's prayer breakfast, the ladies' prayer group also. So let me invite you to come on Wednesday night at 6.30 to be a part of our time of Bible study and prayer that we have each week in the prayer room downstairs. Last week, you also elected seven deacons to go back on the active, be on the active body of deacons for the next three years. There are Walt Cochran, John Gonstadt, Jack Harrison, Paul Holly, Matt Jackson, Johnny Knight, and Christopher Riles. We're so grateful indeed for those men. I would ask you to be in prayer for them. We're blessed at First Baptist to have a body of deacons who are servants. These guys give, their, give themselves away every week in service to our Lord. So thank you so much to our deacons for what they do. Also, many of you would want to know that this morning around 1.30, James Adair went to be with our Lord. He suffered for many months now with uh, liver cancer. He had gotten so low, so frail, that such a huge relief now for Barbara and Scott as they've watched him suffer and go down for so long. He's truly with the Lord now. Don't know for sure yet about the arrangements. We'll announce that as soon as we know uh, the first of the week. We're privileged at First Baptist to have all kinds of new opportunities for ministry. Our women do a remarkable job of coming up with different ideas to minister to our folks. This morning, Amy White is going to come and share a new ministry for you ladies.
Good morning. It's so good to see you. I'm very excited to let you know that First Baptist will be participating in a simulcast event um, for our ladies the first weekend in March. If Gathering 2021 will be a virtually hosted event with the theme, Even If the Worst Happens, We Don't Lose Hope. If you choose to participate in the event, you have a few different options for viewing. Your first option is to view the event here in the sanctuary virtually with other women. CDC guidelines will be followed to make sure that everyone stays um, safe. Your second option is to live stream the event on your own from your home. You can even meet with a small group and live stream together, but I would like to remind you that if you live stream in a small group in your home that all participants still have to have a ticket. Um, so please make sure that you are aware of that. Detailed information and a link for registration can be found on the church's website. Um, as well as on the church's social media accounts. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the church office or to Shannon Bush or to me. Um, and we will do anything we can to answer your questions and help you get registered. I look forward to worshiping and learning with anyone who chooses to join us. I really think that it will be um, a great event and look forward to seeing you all the weekend of March 5th and 6th. me when I kneel down at your feet it's a place of healing it's a place where I find freedom there's a place my can't see where my spirit longs to be it's a place of healing it's a place of living freedom Can reach heaven, I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship, I've come to worship. There's a love that lives in me. sin that's binding and leads me to a place of freedom. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the wall Falling down, I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed. I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. There's no one that can bring me peace, that can wash me clean like you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can free me. You save my soul. I've come to worship, I'm gonna sing my song, like I am unashamed, I'm gonna shout for joy, let the men 
mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship Would you pray with me? Father, indeed we are so thankful for the peace and the freedom that we experience when we are in your presence and God, we thank you for being here this morning and we thank you that no matter what may be going on around us or what we may ex be experiencing, God, that we can experience freedom and peace and victory in the fact that you love us and that we belong to you, that we are children of God. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen. You may be seated. This past uh, weekend, our youth ministry was able to have our annual Disciple Now uh, next door, and one of the the theme verses we looked at for the weekend is Psalms 51, where David cries out, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation. Um, this year we were able to invite some of our friends that have helped us before, Charlie and his band from the Greenville, South Carolina area came down to, to help us for the weekend. And uh, they came on a Thursday uh, night, and I met them at the youth building to unload some of the equipment, and uh, they wanted to go get something to eat. So it ended up that my family and them ate at the same local restaurant. And uh, um, just so happened that one of the young girls that had graduated a couple years ago uh, from a school here in town was working was a waitress at that restaurant and uh, even though she doesn't go to our church and not involved in our church uh, she had come to disciple now like four years ago when Charlie and the guys had been here before and so she recognized Charlie and she went and said are you Charlie and he goes yeah she said well I remember you from about four years ago when you came and well she goes off and tells some of the other uh, waitresses that hey that group of guys over there they're here to sing this weekend and so another waitress a little bit later came by Charlie's table and said, Hey, I heard y'all here to sing. And he said, Yeah, we'll be at First Baptist Church this weekend. Why don't you come and hear us anytime? She goes, No, I, I heard you're going to sing here tonight. <laughs> and so uh, Charlie goes, Okay, sure. So he goes to the car, gets his guitar, and in a few minutes my family kind of joined him, and they started singing some praise songs. And this like impromptu worship service just broke out right in the middle of the restaurant. Uh, people that were eating there pulled out their phones, waitresses came, cooks came out from the back and were all just kind of videoing and experiencing what was going on. And after we sang for about 10, 15 minutes, uh, Charlie said, hey, do y'all mind if I uh, just have a prayer with you? And, uh, and so the waitresses and the cooks, some of the people they were eating came over to the table he says I just want to thank y'all for serving us tonight um, you did such a good job and uh, you showed us Jesus to us tonight because that's why Jesus came to earth to serve us and to love us and he said no matter what you're going through no matter what you're facing in life I want you to understand that God's with you and he'll help you get through whatever you're going through As tears started to fall at different people's faces and Charlie prayed for them. Well, one of the songs that they uh, sang at that impromptu worship service became one of our themes, came from one of our anthems for the weekend, and uh, we just wanted to share with that with you this morning. tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve and you take these broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion, and 
giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won And I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated We're the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let this striving cease This is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am Crown me with confidence I'm seated In the heavenly place undefeated We're the one who has conquered it all When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles are breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me And you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am Crown me with confidence, I'm seated In the heavenly place undefeated By the power of your name, I'm seated In the heavenly place undefeated We're the one who has conquered it all Christopher, thank you so very much. And Chris, thank you again for sharing that. I'm so grateful he shared that with the congregation this morning and with you. COVID-19 has changed everything. But Chris was so determined to have something positive for our young people that we talked several weeks ago, and he wanted to know, could he bring Charlie and his group? I said, absolutely. So we were blessed. This young man and his group from the Carolinas came. In addition to that fine group, Chris had Mitchell Dean, a good friend of his from the Auburn area, come to be the keynote speaker, and he does a fabulous job. Just recently, uh, Mitchell has been invited for his family to move to northern Uganda. There's a huge, huge gathering of refugees there. He's been invited to come and live there and minister to those folks. So our young people are blessed to hear some of the finest servants on the face of the earth. And I'm so grateful to Chris for what he does to shape the lives of our young people for Jesus. You bow with me in prayer. Lord, indeed, our hearts overflow with gratitude to see what you're doing. How last weekend, 43 young people came, as well as all the leaders. Those young people came on Friday night, and not a single one missed a single service throughout Sunday morning. So, Lord, thank you for the Spirit's work in the lives of those young people and those whom you brought in to touch our young people for Jesus. We truly give you thanks. In the world we live in today, we cannot do enough to touch our children and young people for Jesus, to give them the solid rock to stand upon. So Lord, thank you for a church that is truly committed in every kind of way to do all we can to teach children and young people about Jesus. We truly thank you. 
What a privilege now this morning, oh God, for the folks downstairs and for the folks up here to be able to come to the house of prayer to pray, to sense your touch, and to know that no matter what happens, for we're living in difficult days, your grace is always enough. For this morning, people in our church family are hurting so many medical issues, challenges that are so huge, death, so many challenges. But God, thank you for a church full of the love of Christ, always reaching out to people in crisis to care, to share, to help bear the loads as Jesus taught us to do. We thank you in the midst of that. Your grace is never insufficient. It is always enough. So we give you praise. Lord, thank you so much for all those who have gathered in worship this morning in the early service as well as this one. For people who are hungry to know you, Lord. And so as we gather today in the name of Jesus, Spirit, would you move in our midst that we'll see Jesus. We'll feel his touch of grace. And we'll know the depth of concern he has for each of us. We thank you now for what you're going to do in our lives throughout this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Only trust him, only trust him now. Let's all stand together and sing all four stanzas. is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are fully blessed. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him. be seated.
please turn with me now in your Bible to John's Gospel, chapter 4. John, chapter 4. Two passages, one, verses 27 following, and then verses 39 following. Verses 27 following to start with. John, chapter 4. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or, why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. Because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Her life had not been good. She had known five husbands. And one man she was living with now was not her husband. And then she met Jesus. And everything about her life changed after she met Jesus. There are many lessons we can learn from this woman whose life was broken, who became a strong witness for Jesus. This woman will remind us of the positive effect of Jesus' personal touch and his concern. When Jesus began to talk with her, she sensed something unusual about him. Normally people looked down on her. Normally people did not want to associate with her because of her reputation. But not so with Jesus. You see, Jesus had no worry about social custom. Social etiquette did not bother him. In that culture, a Jewish man must never speak publicly to a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman. But Jesus did not worry about that. He was not concerned about social custom. What he was concerned about was this woman. He wanted her to know God. And she sensed quickly how much he cared. She sensed his personal concern for her. And what a tremendous difference that made. She felt loved. Here's the truth we need to understand. People can feel the attitude of love we have toward them. The love of Christ in our hearts can flow outwardly to people in our way of life with them. Their lo our love for them in Christ is so encouraging. People need the Lord. They need to be encouraged by His touch. Paul Thigpen came home from work one afternoon, walked into the kitchen, a kitchen he had left clean and spotless that morning, only to find a horrible mess when he walked in. Flour was everywhere. Pots and pans were everywhere. It was an absolute mess. He felt very irritated until he saw on the counter a little movement of where there was a little note written, chocolatey in effect. His little girl had been doing some cooking. And here's what she wrote. Doing something for you, Dad, your angel. Suddenly that irritation left. Paul said to know that my little girl loved me, and she did all this mess to try to do something for me, encouraged me tremendously. Folks, you and I can learn from this woman whose life had been broken, the positive effect of Jesus' love and concern. We want to make sure People know we care. This woman would also remind us of the lack 
of concern by the disciples. You see, the disciples did not have the love of Christ in their hearts that he had for people. When they came back and saw Jesus talking with a woman, they couldn't believe their eyes. It was forbidden for a Jewish man to speak with a woman in public. You never would do that, especially in the daytime. Nobody was allowed to do that. But here was Jesus talking to this woman. These disciples had ill will in their hearts. They didn't like that. So notice what happened. She felt their lack of concern and she eased away. She went back to her village. She did not have any desire to be around those disciples who didn't care for her. She left. May we understand this truth? People can feel the attitude we have in our hearts toward them. They, we may smile at them, act all rosy with them, but they know what's in our hearts. They can feel that. Several years ago, I was in a conference and I heard this lecturer say that children can feel the attitude we have toward them. Children know, without our saying anything, if we like children. This truth matters. It's universally true. People can feel how you and I feel about them. So may we learn this morning from this woman that we do not ever want to have a lack of concern, but we want to care deeply for everybody we meet. People need to be concerned. We need to be concerned and share that concern about people. Two men were talking about religion. One of them said this, there are times I'd like to ask God, why don't you do something about all the sin and wrongdoing that's going on? I know you could do it. Why don't you do it? The other man said, well, why don't you ask him? And the man said this, I'm afraid if I ask him why he doesn't do something, he'll ask me, why don't you do something about it? You see, you and I have the capacity within us to touch people's lives for right. So we want to make sure that we care, that it matters to us how people live, and we do the best we can to communicate that concern for them. That's the task of each, for each of us today. This woman would also remind us that when Jesus gives us life, it is as natural as breathing air to share that witness with others. You see, Jesus had given her something she had not known. He gave her life. She had been through five husbands, was living with a man who was not her husband. Her life was miserable. She was cut off from other people. People didn't want to talk to her. And suddenly Jesus gave her life. He forgave her. He set her free. She couldn't keep that to herself, so she made her way quickly to the village of the Samaritans where she was from, and she said, look, I want to tell you about the man who told me everything I'd ever done. I want to tell you about somebody who changed my life. She couldn't keep that to herself. And notice what happened. Because of her witness, she touched lives. She influenced them, and these folks came to see Jesus. They wanted to see what had changed her life so completely. The effect of her witness raises some questions to me. What kind of effect does my life have on other people? What kind of influence does your witness for Jesus have? When folks see your life every day, when they hear you talk and they see the relationships you have with other people, does that impact them for Jesus? Do they realize that you have something so wonderful in your life that you want to share it and it makes them want to know it? That's how influence works. A missionary was in Africa visiting with, in the home of one of the villagers. He was sitting on the patio at a little table. 
he noticed that a little black ant made its way up the little leg of the table onto the table where there was some sugar. An ant just has a way of finding some sugar, doesn't it? So that ant made its way up, moved around that sugar, turned around, crawled back down the leg, and was out of sight. In just a few moments, two more little black ants came, went up the leg, went on the top and moved around that sugar, went back down the leg, and they were gone. In just a few moments, a steady stream of little black ants made their way to that top of that table. The man said it was as if in their communication system, those little ants said to one another, I found something good, and I want to share it with you. I enjoy feeding the birds at our house. Outside our kitchen window, I buy some bird seed, and I'll put a quart of seed out real early every morning. And I'm fascinated to watch the birds. Suddenly, a little wren will show up, and then there might be 20 wrens just suddenly there. Or a red-headed woodpecker. And then suddenly a, another red-headed woodpecker. Or some blue jays will come down like bombers. Zoom. They just come down. They're there. Or then there'll be a dove. And then suddenly there are 15 doves out there. Joyce and I have commented so many times. Somehow or another, they communicate with each other. We found some food. Or you've had this experience. You've been at the beach. You on a pier, you walk out, it's afternoon, kind of late, and you've got some stale bread. You take that bread, you, if you've got your grandchildren, especially, you want them to see that, and you start throwing up that bread. What happens? One seagull, and before you run it, they come, shoo, shoo. As Joyce is not in this service, so I'm going to tell you what happens sometimes at our place. I wouldn't dare say this with her here. She was in the early service. Our grandchildren will get Joyce out there, and that, they call her Nana. They'll get Joyce out there, and they'll take this bread, especially Luke Bush. Guess what he does? He throws it right over her head. <laughs> and that thing goes, shoo, and she'll say, <laughs> I better stop right there. I really will get in trouble because she'll find out what I've, I've done. But you see, that, it's amazing how those birds work in it. Like they communicate with each other. That's what this woman did. She came from brokenness to wholeness of life, and she wanted to share that. You see, you and I have the privilege of sharing Jesus. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. For when somebody comes to know Jesus, they've got life in its fullest expression. You and I know that when somebody comes to Jesus, He'll change their lives. It's a whole new ball game. Do you remember the story of this older man who was walking early one morning, right after daylight, he was walking on the beach. And up in front of him was a young man, maybe an older teenager boy, who had, some, who had a starfish. He picked up the starfish and he gently threw it back in the water. The old man saw that and said, what's he doing? So he walks up to the young man and says, son, tell me what you're doing. This young man says, sir, this, this starfish is alive now, but if I leave it on this beach, when the sun comes down, It'll kill that starfish. So I'm picking up the starfish and throwing it back in the water so it can live. Son, don't you realize this beach has miles of territory? And these starfish, you can't save all those starfish. So the young man picked up that one starfish he had and he said, I know it, but and he threw that one gently back in the water. He said, but it made a difference to this one. Somebody this week needs to hear about Jesus from you. And if they receive it, it'll change their life completely. You pray with me. Lord, thank you for what you did in the life of this broken woman whose life was truly in shambles until she met you. You changed her completely. And from her we understand the importance of your positive concern and touch in somebody's life. But she would also remind us if we don't care. People sense that also. So Holy Spirit, help each of us as disciples of Jesus 
to have the same kind of love in our hearts that Jesus had for this woman. We don't want to be guilty of a lack of concern. So Spirit created each of us the love of Christ so people will understand and know the depth of your love for them. We thank you that we can be a part of touching lives for Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, as the finest way on earth any of us can come to the Lord. This morning, as we sing this wonderful hymn of invitation, would you allow it also to be a hymn of commitment? As you say to Jesus this morning, just as I am, I come, Lord. I have no idea what you want to do with me this week. But I want so much to be a person who shares your love. I want to touch somebody's life in a positive way that honors Jesus. I hope you'll sing that from your heart as a hymn of commitment before the Lord. And if you're here this morning and you'd like to make a public decision for Christ, we'd be honored to have you come as we stand to sing, Just As I Am. Just as I Thank you so much for being here this morning. I know that you've been touched by the music in a wonderful way, as I have. It's been a blessing of the Lord to hear such beautiful worship and music. May each of us remember throughout this week that we literally are the only gospel some folks are going to read. Many folks will never pick up the Bible to read it, but they'll see us. And I pray this week as they look at the way we live and the way we talk and the way we treat people, they really will see Jesus. In just a moment, we'll have our benediction and also a closing hymn. Let me ask you please to stay in place as we sing the closing hymn. And then after it's over, if the back rows would please depart and go out, we're trying to stay as safe as we possibly can stay. You bow with me in prayer. What a special time this has been, O oh Lord, to be in your house. I pray for all of us, those who are downstairs and upstairs, that... We're one in Christ. And as we go forth into our community this week, that your spirit will work through us to be a living witness as this broken woman was because she met Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him.